Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24, the best stories from our correspondents from around the world. Swine flu, officially named Influenza A H1N1 by the World Health Organization, is an ever-present on the news agenda. In June, the WHO raised the alert level to scale six. The virus, first fatally found, of course, in Mexico, has now traveled worldwide, claiming close to 3,000 lives in its wake. The vaccine against swine flu won't be available before October, so more and more it begins to feel like a race against time as the traditional flu season is soon to be upon us. The vaccine is still under doubt. Most vulnerable people will get it first, of course, but many questions of protection that they will actually get. Our special reporters tried to tackle the many fears that people everywhere have about swine flu and the pandemic, but there's one basic central question. How big is the risk? This report is by France Van Katz, Alexandra Renach. The 11th of June, 2009. The World Health Organization's headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. Director General Dr. Margaret Chan has a momentous announcement to make. The scientific criteria for an influenza pandemic have been met. I have therefore decided to raise the level of influenza pandemic alert from phase five to phase six. With that, the first official pandemic of the 21st century was made official. Phase six is the World Health Organization's highest alert level. But what does that really mean? For many people, pandemic means a lot of deaths. But if you look at the definition, it, it, it is not this is the case. The definition is, is really related to how wild geographically the new virus was spreading. According to the WHO's latest figures from the end of August, in six months, the AH1N1 virus has hit 177 countries. It's caused 2,837 deaths. The organization claims that if nothing is done to stop the virus spreading, two billion people could end up contracting it. That's approximately one third of the world's population. It's because of this pessimistic scenario that governments around the world started preparing what amounted to battle plans as a matter of urgency. It's a fluid that's spreading from human to human. We have always known it would be impossible to contain the, the virus indefinitely. The objective is clear. We have to do everything we can to guarantee the best possible protection for our citizens in the face of this enemy. We can call it an enemy. It's an invisible, changing and mobile enemy. So far, France has seen few cases of the illness, but the state response to the threat has been strong. Each year, between three and five million French people catch seasonal flu, However, it's estimated that figure could rise to more like 20 million with the so-called swine flu. An alarming estimate for the government. In 2003, French ministers played down the threat of a summer heat wave, a heat wave that would eventually see 15,000 people die in the space of just two weeks. In the face of this new deadly risk, the government is taking no chances. Face à la grippe, des gestes simples pour limiter les risques de transmission. Ministers are keen to guarantee tens of millions of face masks and doses of Tamiflu. These stocks would normally be kept hidden to avoid causing panic. This time, they were shown to the cameras. The Interministerial Crisis Committee held a series of meetings, each followed by detailed press conferences. The Health Ministry sought to offer reassurance, no matter how high the price, buying up 94 million doses of vaccines. We reserved the vaccines very early on because the labs won't be able to increase their manufacturing capacity later on and orders made in advance are being given priority. Antiviral masks, vaccines, press conferences and extra staff. The price of that reassurance is steep, so far around 1.5 billion euros. Compare that, however, to the virus's effects so far. There have been fewer than 10 deaths linked to influenza A in metropolitan France. In most cases, there were other underlying conditions. So it's hard to tell whether the AH1N1 virus was in fact responsible. Ultra-dangerous superflu or a case of the sniffles. 
Legions of medical experts have been spending months trying to answer that question. It's a flu like any flu, except that you have it in July rather than in the winter. But it's still just a flu, and I see no reason for this panic. But if the situation had been different, what if it had been a very contagious, serious virus with a high mortality rate, maybe 50 to 60 percent, as with the bird flu? In that case, if nothing had been done, how would the population have reacted? It's about taking precautions. For the pharmaceutical laboratories, it's a race against time. They've been working flat out, 24 hours a day, for several months. Take French company Sanofi Pasteur, the world's biggest vaccine manufacturer. They started production on a massive scale without first obtaining the usual authorization. And why? Sanofi's press officer wouldn't speak on camera, but gave this explanation by phone. To give ourselves more time, we started production despite not having the official license for industrial scale production. We would have to have waited until November, and that would have meant the vaccine only first coming into public use after the second quarter of next year, which wouldn't have been of any use. This new vaccine was created in record time, the likes of which had never before been seen in the history of vaccinations. Normally, it would take years to confirm the safety and effectiveness of this kind of drug. This vaccine specialist has 25 years' experience in the field. He says that accelerating production in this way to achieve mass vaccination is worrying. Regular medicines have an effect on the patient for the duration of the treatment. Vaccines, on the other hand, have an effect for life, supposedly a beneficial one. But we would normally test whether they also carry harmful lifelong effects at the same time. So there's an illogicality in the immunization sector with them producing these drugs, which should be much more thoroughly regulated than others. But in fact, they're going through just a short period of development. It's a danger to public health. What about on the other side of the English Channel then, in the United Kingdom? More than 100,000 people there have contracted the virus and 66 have died. That makes it the worst hit country in all of Europe. And some doctors in the UK are concerned about the vaccine too. Dr. Richard Halverson is a vaccination specialist. He has no doubts that vaccines have saved millions of lives. But for the last nine years, he's been leading an investigation into their less desirable effects. And he believes swine flu vaccines haven't been sufficiently tested. The vaccine is being rushed through faster than any other vaccine has in history. And so it cannot be tested adequately for safety and effectiveness in the way that we would hope a vaccine could be. Uh, so we don't know if it will work and we don't know if it's safe. And with those concerns and with a very mild threat, there is really no reason to vaccinate. And uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Yeah. When we told him that French health ministry experts had put 800,000 pregnant women on their list of priority recipients of the vaccine, he expressed concern. One of, at least one of the swine flu vaccines will contain mercury, for example, which is a, a very toxic poison that has been removed from all routinely used childhood vaccines, but nevertheless will be in the swine flu vaccine, that is a potential neurotoxin and uh, I couldn't advise any pregnant women to, to take a vaccine with any mercury in. For many years, Dr Halverson has been calling for the vaccine ingredient thiomersal to be banned. It's used as a preservative and contains mercury. His research shows that among other effects, the element could damage the brain and affect the immune and neurological systems. It could also bring on symptoms similar to those seen in autism. But the World Health Organization's Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety decided three years ago that there was no evidence vaccines containing thiomersal were dangerous. Several drug makers use the ingredient and say they have no choice. World number two GlaxoSmithKline says it's down to the fact they have to quickly deliver the billions of doses ordered by Northern Hemisphere countries. We have been trying 
to reduce the amount of this compound in the vaccines. Now, however, for the pandemic vaccine, because it is being produced in a large bottle, um, and doctors will have to put syringes in and draw out as they need it. You know, um, I, I've been a doctor for over eight years and I've used it so many times. We need to have that preservative. Mercury is only dangerous in large quantities. Now, the quantities that we're talking about within these vaccines are absolutely minute. No comprehensive study has yet been carried out to discover the maximum thiomersal doses for humans. For the moment, health authorities are strongly advising one treatment for all, antivirals. Their brand names, Tamiflu and Relenza. In the UK, as elsewhere in the world, the drugs are being prescribed to all and sundry at the first sign of symptoms. A few days after attending a crowded concert, this couple fell ill. So we called, we called the doctor, um, who called me back on a telephone consultation later on that day and um, diagnosed me with swine flu and prescribed me Tamiflu. No, immediately after I took the Tamiflu, about an hour afterwards, it would always make me feel very unwell. Um, my temperature would suddenly shoot up. And like I was having a hot flush, I'd suddenly get very hot and sweaty around the face. Um, and yeah, it just made me feel a bit more nausea. Tamiflu producer Roche has been officially endorsed by the World Health Organization in the fight against the pandemic. The multinational drug maker holds commercial rights on the active ingredient in Tamiflu, the most commonly bought of the vaccines worldwide. At the group's Paris headquarters, bosses turn to official health advice to distract from questions about the drug itself. In the controversy that took place this summer over the risk-benefit ratio of taking Tamiflu, the French medicine agency has insisted on the fact that today the advantages of taking Tamiflu are vastly superior to the possible digestive inconvenience. Since April, more than 100 countries have ordered a total of over 270 million doses of Tamiflu. Good news for the pharma industry's bottom line. Each year, the seasonal flu generates 4 billion euros worth of business for Roche. This new pandemic will likely double their profits. Roche and Sanofi are two of the companies listed by this investment company. Most pharmaceutical groups saw their share price increase. It's the case of Roche, for example. It went up from 141 Swiss francs to 170. That's a 15 to 20 percent increase. Same thing for Novartis. And as for the French company Sperion, that makes masks to prevent the spread of the flu, its share price has increased by almost 50 percent. And it's been like this since the World Health Organization's announcement on June 11th. The principle of taking precautions has been followed to the letter by all Western governments with the aim of protecting their citizens. But these costly and often hasty measures have also raised various questions. That's why the Czech Republic has chosen to rule out using the American vaccine Baxter, which it has decided is risky. Meanwhile, in the United States, vaccine producers have been given legal immunity against potential lawsuits should any mishaps occur. The World Health Organization is repeating its advice that while the AH1N1 virus is highly contagious, the illness itself is relatively harmless. Vaccines will be delivered to Northern Hemisphere countries from October onwards. For patients, they'll be free of charge, but not mandatory. Well, that report by Alexandra Renner, who joins us now in the studio. Alexandra, what is the situation in France? Well, in France, so far, some 50,000 people have gone to see their general practitioner. So there's at least one true a one true case per person per week. In fact, it doesn't sound like a lot, but specialists consider that we've already gone over an initial cap that's considered epidemic. Uh, the uh, Ministry of Health uh, considers that the virus is circulating throughout France, and it's increasingly so, and they're basing those on the... Uh, uh, figures from the uh, National Health Watch Institution and the uh, first virus, uh, the first uh, second string could come uh, at the end of September. It's not virulent, it's very contagious, and it's very close to the seasonal grip, the seasonal health uh, And how about flu. the actual vaccine? Where is France up to at the moment with that in terms of developing it, in terms of distributing the vaccine? Well, there are a few batches that have already arrived in France. Uh, we're expecting some million uh, 
vaccinations to come into France. Uh, the health ministry has uh, is looking at the vaccinating uh, the healthcare workers, uh, pregnant women, and people uh, taking care of uh, infants under six months old. When we use look at the health professionals, if we look at the professor Luc Montagnier, who is also the co laureate of uh, the Nobel Prize, says we need to get better prepared. And uh, in fact, virologist uh, Claude Anoun from the Institut de Pasteur is an expert as well in uh, virology. He has he recommends uh, vaccines for everyone. Many people are against vaccines, though. Uh, we've seen uh, we've surveyed some 12,000 nurses uh, to see if they to see what they thought about it, and it's been surprising because these people mostly said they did not want to uh, get the vaccine. Some 63 percent refused categorically to have the vaccine. Uh, are a bit worried about the harmlessness of the vaccine, are worried about some effects, and they certainly don't want to be considered guinea pigs. So that's a bit of the worry in the general public. Did you meet lots of people who were genuinely very scared by this virus? We met a lot of people who were questioning, who were wondering about the virus. Uh, we hear in the media a lot about the flu, uh, but the health care workers are a bit, it seems all a bit fuzzy and they don't seem to be worried about it. So people get confused. Uh, the medical world, in fact, that these health care workers do not want to be vaccinated. Uh, some third in the UK don't want to be uh, vaccinated. A majority in Japan don't want to be vaccinated as well. So this does tend to scare people. Alexandra Renard, thank you for giving that extra insight into your story. That was uh, reporters here on France 24. And of course, you can see this program again on our website, www.francefancat.com. Stay with us.